Hello and welcome back to Data News of the Week. You know what this is. It's the video where we go through all the different news stories that have happened this week that concern data, networking and storage, but they're just too vague for me to put into any of the other videos. First story up this week, it is the brand new 8-port switch from QNAP. I remember when QNAP was just a NAS brand and even then they'd really dabbled with little bits and bobs, but somewhere in the last two and a half or so years, they have really doubled and trebled down on all of these network switches. And the idea of 2.5 GBE switches, although I, like a lot of people, was very, very skeptical skeptical early doors, their 5-port unmanaged switch is weirdly popular given that, you know, there's 10 GBE out there and I think it's a sensible move from them off the back of that to look into this new 8-port. This is the QSW11088T, an 8-port unmanaged fanless, so silent, switch that supports 2.5 gigabit ethernet on every single port. It serves as an affordable middle ground between standard 1 gigabit ethernet connectivity and 10 GBE. It's much easier to upgrade into. You can gradually upgrade your whole network. It makes a lot of sense. And although I'm still somewhat dubious about 2.5 GBE switches, it has to be said that I've been proven wrong at least twice now. So rather than me, you know, fall a third time, I think this might actually be something you guys might care about. Now, there will almost certainly be bigger options than this. Given the 5 port was so popular, you can totally see 12 or 16 port alternatives to this unmanaged switch. Although I'm surprised we're not seeing many managed alternatives to this. But still nonetheless, do look out for this. It's been on their own YouTube channel and I think this is going to be released pretty soon. Next up, SSD news. This is an SSD that we have already talked about in the past, but now it is now formally available. It is the Acer Predator GM7000. What makes it special? Well, much like the Viper that we've talked about here on the channel before, and we've got testing on this SSD coming soon, this is another SSD that's taken advantage of the InnoGrit controller. This is the viable alternative, and by viable is actually already better in some ways, than the Fizon controller, the E18, that's being heavily utilized in a number of newer generation PCIe Gen 4 SSDs. This SSD, the, again, the Predator GM, has already started featuring as reviews on a number of platforms. I haven't got one yet, um, but nonetheless, this is an SSD that promotes 7,400 megabytes per second of a 6,700 megabytes per second potential throughput. Though it actually peaks out higher than that in some of the larger capacities as well. Um, it's available in 1 and 2 TB. I don't know if there's a 4 TB version out there. And it takes advantage of Micron 96 layer uh, 3D TLC um, uh, NAND on board. It's got DDR4 2,666 uh, megahertz memory there. And again, scaled against capacity. Uh, but the IOPS a little less than I would have liked, 700,000 um, um, random 4K read and write IOPS respectively. But what makes this particularly unique, other than that integrate controller still being somewhat minorly used in the majority of PCIe Gen 4 SSDs right now, is that it has a, a rather bizarre top panel. It's... They, you know, were thrown around words like graphite in early presentation of this SSD, but it's actually kind of encased foam which promotes airflow over the SSD and one of the things I'm really looking forward to seeing is what sustained activity on this SSD with even a minimal heatsink or even without a heatsink would be with this foam panel because I think it would be daft to put anything that's heat resistive on top of there but I'm going to be interested to see how that works with the SSD in real world use so we're going to keep an eye on this SSD and of course it will feature on the channel very soon. Back to QNAP and covering something I talked about a few days ago, we're starting to see a lot of part numbers of potential new QNAPs flying around. Now, again, I've made a whole video on an article about this. Do check those out. But what I think is really interesting here is one particular part number is bubbling to the top more than any other, and that's the TBS464. We're seeing this model ID crop up a lot, and I think it's going to be almost certainly the first meaningful release in the QNAP 64 series. This is um, the newer generation of devices that I'm pretty much certain is going to be Celeron based, based on the architecture and the history of the devices. And the TBS series, of course, was their kind of micro, very low noise, low impact SSD optimized NAS. It had four M2 slots in it, which almost certainly means this new release, they're going to be opting for NVMEs on there. Although the rest of the features of this device, of course, none of us know, but we're seeing it crop up more and more. And with the announcement of full release of QTS5 this week as a full release version, 
we're seeing lots of firmware updates and stuff around there where these um, model IDs of 64, 62 and 64C are cropping up more and more online, which can only mean that the 64 series may not be as far, 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 far away as the one some of us might have originally thought. Finally, I talked about the Intergit controller, but of course, Fizon aren't exactly sleeping in in the mornings. Fizon are now talking about their PCIe Gen 5 controller for M2 NVMe SSD, known as the Fizon E26. This controller is going to be a PC, their, their first PCIe uh, Generation 5 SSD. Now, for those that aren't aware, PCIe uh, Gen 5 as an M2 slot, so that's times 4, has a potential 16 gigabytes, so that's um, 16,000 megabytes per second potential throughput in its bandwidth. Obviously, this controller and the NAND that's built onto it aren't going to fully saturate that. We've already started seeing these newer generation SSDs saturate 7 of the 8 potential gigabytes of bandwidth on PCIe Gen 4. So it's going to be very interesting to see if PCIe Gen 5 times 4 is going to get anywhere close to that when it reaches full commercial release. Now, um, Fizon have been you know, framing press releases left, right and centre out there. And they're saying that they're hoping to get this out there to consumers in the second half of 2022. I say consumers, these are going to be quite enterprisey priced and enterprisey targeted early doors. But still, nonetheless, this has been Data News of the Week. Do stay tuned and click like and subscribe if you want to be kept in the know about stuff to do with data, storage, networking and more week on week. And of course, click like if you've enjoyed the video. Helps me know what I'm doing right. Click subscribe to learn more and I will see you next week.